Hey, what's going on with shipping? Sal Mercagliano here. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at two new innovations being done by Maersk Lines. One is a conversion to an existing container ship. The other is the introduction of a new type of container ship. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, if we're talking about Maersk and container ships, there's nothing better for me to do than to break out my Lego Maersk Triple E ship. That's right. This is the Lego set that was done when Maersk Lines introduced the Triple E. Now, the Triple E were revolutionary at the time. In the early 2000s, these ships, 18,000 TEUs being built in Korea, initial order for 10, followed by another order for 10, and then subsequently another 11. These ships really changed a lot of what we've seen with container ships. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about container ship construction here because there's a lot of questions about this, especially with these new construction vessels that Maersk is introducing. So here you get the basic profile of it. Now, it's not exactly to scale, and especially in terms of the number of containers on board, but it gives you a good general idea. One of the things you'll notice on modern container ships, this is almost universal, is the lack of gear to offload the containers. This means that to offload containers, you have to be in a port that has those large ship-to-shore cranes. Uh, cranes take up room. That means cargo space. And one of the things you always want to do on a container ship is maximize your container space. You'll notice a, what's kind of called a split house design on these vessels. Back aft, you'll see the uh, smokestacks for the engines. These ships use diesel engines in the case of the Maersk Triple E's twin diesels on twin screws, which is very unusual. Usually you'll see one large slow speed diesel on a single prop. The Maersk Triple E's are a little bit different. You've got back here your two screws back here and you'll see them. The stacks and everything are right here because they're right above the engine room. The engine rooms are back aft right here in the after part of the vessel. The house is up forward. Notice how high the bridge is. Now, traditionally on container ships, what you would see is an aft house arrangement. So typically what you would have is an aft house rela uh, relationship here. You would have the house not up forward here, but back aft with the stacks. And that was a traditional container ship layout you would see. Makes a lot of sense because all the crew accommodations are in the house. So engineers can go right down into the engine room, right back up. This is fairly standard. The reason we see the house move forward is very basic. As the container stacks got higher, your view from the bridge decreased. And so what you have here is a very kind of plain view, which means the forward area here, you can't see. You have a massive blind spot forward of the bow. Now, in terms of out in the ocean, not really important, not really important to see what's right in front of you out in the middle of the ocean. But when you're navigating close in, small boats, buoys, channels, that's a big problem. And so what we see happen is as these ships get longer and the stacks get higher, the bridge gets higher, but being this far aft does not work. It works great on a tanker. A tanker is great because you don't have these huge stacks on board here. You get a nice kind of flat area here where you can see all the way forward. And so on a tanker, all of a sudden you can have that nice big high area here because that line of view here isn't obstructed by these forward containers. So the Maersk Triple E's can carry 18,340 TEUs. The ships have been out for over a decade and they're coming in for a 10 year scheduled dry docking. It's a fairly significant dry docking, the 10 year. So a lot of modifications will be done to the ship. So to store containers on board the vessel, to put them in here, you have lashing bridges. Lashing bridges allow you to lash the containers in place. So all the containers lock together in the corners. At the corner of each container, there's a locking mechanism. And so you lock the four corners of the container. However, the containers are stacked one on top of each other. So it's kind of a bad Lego design because they don't cross connect them. They're all just kind of individually stacked in rows. And what you have from these lashing bridges is you throw lashings onto the bottom lines of containers. However, the top stacks, the top three, four, five stacks don't have lashings on them. They're just solely locked in by the corner lashings. And what they're gonna do is install Mickey Mouse ears. So what Mickey Mouse ears are are basically this. They're going to take the lashing bridges here and add little wings to them. And what those little outer wings will do was allow them to really secure the outer containers. And that's gonna allow them to add 736 TEUs. They'll be able to go another stack higher. So now you'll be able to go another stack higher. 
And what that means for obviously the ships is more cargo on board. More cargo is the key. You always want to maximize your cargo to the max amount. Now, Maersk has not been in the process of building ultra large container ships, the big 24 to 25,000 TEU vessels, like ever a lot, or the ones MSC are building right now. So, Maersk is retrofitting the old Maersk triple E's. Some container companies are going even a step further than that. So, for example, Hop Hog right now has come up with a radical, uh, radical uh, kind of option. They are taking the bridge here, and they're actually going to modify the bridge. So some companies are taking a more radical step than what Maersk is doing. Maersk is just modifying the lashing bridges. Very simple modification. Hop Hog Lloyd is actually taking a class of ships and cutting the entire house structure off and actually increasing the height of it. And by increasing the height of it, they're able to see further over the container stacks. What that now means is they can raise the container stacks up a level. So you see here on the forward stacks, I've raised them up a level. And that's because with the bridge being higher, you still have that view over the bow and now you can do it. Now, this is not just a matter of adding more containers and cutting the bridge. You have to do a lot of stability calculations to make sure the ship has enough reserve buoyancy for this, that you have to get recertified with your plimsoll marks and your certification. They will, of course, raise the stacks here above. Maybe issues with the uh, smokestacks. They may have to keep the lower, the F stacks down low so as you get the good emissions coming out, the good flow of... of, of exhaust coming out but that's a pretty extensive modification to actually physically cut the house raise it and then to add more containers all of that requires certification and a lot of documentation to do that all right the second element here is maersk is introducing an entire new class of vessels and the new class of vessel has two unique features the first is the fuel source Maersk has decided to adopt green methanol as their interim fuel until they can get to a point of being zero carbon emissions. The plan for Maersk is to do that by 2040, a very ambitious plan. Uh, the current guidance coming out from the International Maritime Organization is a reduction by 50% by 2050, but everybody believes they're gonna push that up to 100% by 2050, but Maersk is talking about doing this by 2040. So they're using green methanol. And what green methanol is, and I'll read it from the Maersk side directly, is produced at a US-based facility by capturing biogas from decomposing organic matter in a landfill. The biogrit gas is upgraded to biomethane and injected into a gas grid. And the methanol is produced from the biomethane in the grid on a mass balance basis. I am not an engineer. I'm just telling you what Mare says. So basically what they're doing is they're creating green methanol. Methanol we've seen being used in gas additives all around the world. We see it with the creation of methanol from uh, organic crops. Well, this is what Maersk plans to do. So their new ship is going to be fueled by this method. They had just introduced a smaller container ship, the Laura Maersk, that is fueled on biomethanol. And now this new class of vessels is going to be fueled also by, by uh, green methanol. This new class is different, but it is a much larger vessel. So this new ship is the first of 12 16,200 TEU vessels they haven't named it yet which is very interesting they just launched it and it says maersk on the side they haven't put the, the first name on it the the uh, first green methanol was the laura maersk very historic name when it comes to maersk not exactly sure what they're going to build uh name this one this ship was launched at hyundai heavy industries in korea so the ship is remarkably different than what you see here with the triple e so the triple e is so big it cannot go through the panama canal even through the new locks and one of the things we've seen happen is this realization that you need to fit vessels to go through not just the suez canal but the panama canal because of the changing supply chain they want ships that can swing through each other and that's called neo panamax and the goal is to make neo panamax vessels as big as they can to squeeze through the new locks of the panama canal so the new maersk ship kind of changes this structure entirely so what they're going to do is take the house from where it was kind of a third of the way back. They're going to put it all the way up here on the bow. Actually, go a little bit further up here. It's actually going to be pretty far up, as far forward as they can get it on the vessel. And the reason they're putting that bow, I mean, putting the house all the way forward on the bow is they want to free up as much space behind the ship as they can. 
They're going to take the traditional twin stack arrangement that they have here, go to one stack, and offset it to one side. So you're going to have a stack, but it'll be on the port side of the vessel only. What that means is areas before that could not hold containers will now hold containers. And they won't be small stacks like this. They'll be full-size stacks coming in here. So you're going to get containers all stacked in here. And that allows you to put more containers on the after end of the vessel. That is a configuration we see in many places around the world. Probably the most famous you see this with a forward house like that is up on the Great Lakes with big ore carriers where they have a forward house and the entire after end is carrying cargo. That's what they're doing here on the new Maersk design. Now, a couple of problems with it I'll just highlight. Number one, it works great on the Great Lakes, but the Great Lakes are not the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, they get rough. Don't, don't leave comments, Great Lake sailors. I know it's rough on the Great Lakes. I know what a tough voyage it is. But from Duluth to Chicago is not the same as going from Shanghai to Los Angeles in terms of distance and time. When you put your house all the way up forward here, that's a rough ride. I'm telling you right now, it's a rough ride, especially in a transoceanic voyage where you're going to be coming up and down and pounding. Even if you have stabilizers like they have on most modern ships to keep the ship from rolling, which they do would want on container ships to stop that parametric rolling which causes containers to come loose. This is gonna be a rough ride for the crew, but crew is not the most important thing here. Cargo is what's important. They wanna maximize the cargo on the vessel, so they're sticking the house all the way forward. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge docking a ship like this because you're gonna have an entire length of vessel back here, which can be really hard to see from that bridge. The crew in the house for the engine crew is going to have to traverse all the way back aft and down, which shouldn't be a problem. They'll be under, you know, there should be a, a passageway for them to do it so they don't expose themselves. But it does change the, the nature of the navigation of the vessel. But again, we see ships accommodate this all the time. Remember, the comfort here isn't for the crew. It's to maximize cargo. And that's what Maersk is doing here. So they're going back to this forward house arrangement. The house is up here over the bow, which isn't well supported but can't carry as much cargo. So instead, the cells that were here, the uh, container cells that were here that usually carried less cargo can now be plussed up to carry even more cargo. And that means throughout the length of the vessel here, you can carry cargo, which means you're gonna get 16,200 TEU on a hull that maybe previously could carry 14 to 15,000 TEU. And that's Maersk showing how they do it. Maersk, it's been really interesting to watch because Maersk has not been on the big building craze like every other shipping line is. MSC is on a crazy shipbuilding plan. Maersk has been much more reserved in what they're doing. And matter of fact, they have plans for more ships coming out now on green methanol and with the ability to swing through the Panama Canal or the Suez Canal. And that's Maersk being smart. With the end of the alliance between Maersk and MSC in 2025, they know they have to have ships that can service multiple routes. And that's the way Maersk Lines is going. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a big th thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, you can hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly and yearly subscriber. I mean, Maersk Lego models don't come cheap, people. Uh, we need our props here at what's going on with shipping. I hope you really did enjoy this video and got a little bit of something out of how container ships are laid out and designed. Till the next episode, Sal, signing off.